Sometimes when patients suffer from major brain injuries, we need to do an operation to save their lives. What that can mean is that we need to take a large amount of bone off of the skull to allow the brain to swell. That means that we can't put the bone back in place and we need to take the patient back to theatre several months later. There are all sorts of things that you can put back in place, but what we do is put cranioplasty plates that are 3D printed and patient specific back in place of the bone that we've removed. Today I'm going to be showing you a real cranioplasty procedure done by Mr. Chris Uff and Mr. Tom Doak at the Royal London Hospital. This video is sponsored by OS Design and has medical illustration by Dr. Killian Kearns from Artbiotics. There's real surgical footage coming up, so if you're squeamish, turn away now. This is an example of an OS Design cranial patient-specific cranioplasty, and this is an implant that combines regenerative calcium phosphate with 3D printed titanium reinforcement. The main benefits of using these implants for patients is that firstly, the regenerative material is designed to encourage new bone growth and integrate with the patient's own bone. The implant is carefully designed from a CT scan done of the patient to recreate the original shape of the skull and hopefully create a precise fit and nice cosmetic outcome. I'll link down in the description to some literature that shows the OS Design implant's outcomes and complication rates. <laughs> I'll film you later. All right, mate. Good morning, how are you? <laughs> Just opening the consultant's garden. Thank you. <laughs> Do it quicker, boy. <laughs> Where's your whip? You waiting around. What follows next is real footage of a cranioplasty plate being inserted. So if you're under 18, please switch off now. This image by Artibiotics shows how a patient's head would look without the skull. There's just skin overlying the brain and it's covering there at this point. So we now need to make a cut through the old scar and get down towards the brain and start to take away all of the scar tissue away from the bone edges so that we can fix the cranioplasty plate in place. At this point, you can see that Mr. Uff is going to be opening the old incision along the same scar. He's using a cutting tool called a Colorado, and this is burning through the layers and sealing them as it goes along. The scalp has a very good blood supply and it can bleed quite profusely. So it's important to get control of this bleeding as soon as possible. You can start to see the layers covering the brain coming into view, as well as the skull. We have to be very careful here so that we don't damage the brain that might be underlying this. After several months, quite a lot of scar tissue will have been formed, and sometimes it can be really stuck down towards the brain and its coverings. Now you can see that we have the brain and a covering of material over it, which will probably be the dura and some other material that we would place during the original operation. Now we need to start teasing away the scar tissue away from the bone edges, otherwise we can't get the screws and the cranioplasty plate to sit nice and flush against the skull, working methodically and carefully to tease away all of this scar tissue. At this point, Mr. Uff's left finger is underneath the temporalis muscle, which has fused to this covering of the brain. We're going to carefully cut this away so that we can stitch this over the top of the cranioplasty plate, and that will help give a good cosmetic result. If you don't do this, the temporalis muscle can fall back down towards the cheek and create a lump in the side of the face. Now we've revealed the bone edges. The scar tissue has been removed and we can start to make sure that all of the bone edges are nice and clear for the plate to sit. These swabs are soaked in betadine, which is an antiseptic solution and will help to keep everything nice and clean. This is a fitting template and this will tell us that everything is flush and ready to go before we take the cranioplasty plate out of its packaging. At this point, everything is ready for the cranioplasty plate to go in. We're going to be using titanium screws to fix the Ostesign cranial implant into that defect. It's important to make sure that the temporalis muscle can fit over it and that everything is nice and flush. The skull can grow after a certain amount of time and it can mean that we might need to shave away the bone to make sure this fits well. Here you can see Mr. Uff putting suture material or stitches 
through the plate so that he can affix the temporalis muscle to the top of it once the plate is secured. So as you can see, there's a nice fit and we're going to start putting titanium screws all the way around into these prefabricated templates that OS Design have put in place for us. The placement of all these screw holes is designed carefully, bearing in mind how much access we have to those points. Now we need to make sure that the temporalis muscle is stitched over the top of the plate and as I mentioned before, this will help to give a good cosmetic result and the muscle won't slip back down towards the cheek and create a lump. Now the temporalis has been fixed to the skull plate, helping to reconstruct the shape of the head. You can see Mr. Uff performing hand ties and fixing everything down nicely. At this point, the plate has been put in place and now all that's left is to leave a drain in case there's a collection of blood that will cause a problem after the operation. The drain just sits over the top and is tunneled out towards the top of the head. Now we're just going to make sure that the skin is stitched back together and start to wrap up the operation. As I mentioned before, that regenerative calcium phosphate matrix that's over the top of the titanium reinforcement is designed to encourage new bone growth and integration with the patient's own bone. So now we can close up, get the patient off the table and help them to start recovering. If you've got any questions about the cranioplasty procedure, I'm gonna put a link to a blog post down below the OS Design website, which has got a lot more information about cranioplasties in general. And please don't forget to subscribe, throw some comments down below if you've got any questions you want me to answer specifically.